everybody, Ira Miller here with Homes Around the Villages YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about home inspections and home inspectors because just lately it's been really difficult to get a decent inspection report and we have tried multiple inspectors. And uh, I even went back to a home inspector that I used years ago. I stopped using um, because they came up with some frivolous things in the inspection report, which really um, had no business being in an inspection report. I tried them again. Sure enough, they have not changed. And we're going to talk about them in just a second. But first, I want to talk to you about what home inspections should be like and what we should reference. So when we do a contract for you, in that contract, in paragraph 12, in that paragraph, paragraph 12 talks about general property inspections and repairs. Now, paragraph 12b Two specifically talks about what is called working condition and what is called cosmetic condition. Okay, so that's what a home inspection report is supposed to be about. It's supposed to be about the property condition and what is working and what is really cosmetic and cosmetic items. Paragraph 12 goes into it in detail about what working condition is and what cosmetic condition is. So cosmetic condition, that doesn't have to be fixed by the seller. And again, it goes in detail and I have it right here on my computer and I'm just going to read it to you. So um, cosmetic conditions, what that includes is aesthetic imperfections that do not affect working condition of the item, including but not limited to pitted marcite, tears, worn spots, discoloration of floor colorings, wallpapers, window treatments, nail holes, scrapes, scratches, dents, chips, or caulking in ceilings, walls, flooring, tile, fixtures or mirrors and minor cracks in walls and I, I emphasize minor cracks in walls because we're going to talk about that in just a second. All right, floor tiles, windows, driveways, sidewalks, pool decks and garage and patio floors. Okay, so I encourage everybody who is entering into a contract with me especially or in general even if it's with somebody else to read and pay attention to paragraph 12 b2 because that's going to tell you everything that is supposed to be called out as working condition and also cosmetic conditions just like i explained to you right here don't need to be called out all right so Working condition. What is working condition? Means operating in the manner in which the item was designed to operate. All right. So that's what a home inspector's job is. His job is to go around and make sure everything is in working condition. Okay. So he's supposed to check all the electrical um, ceiling fans, lights, appliances he's just supposed to windows everything needs to be in working condition well so that's what paragraph 12 b2 says and i always have to tell a lot of my people please refer back to your contract that we made out if i'm working with the buyer that we made out for you and it's all detailed in paragraph 12b2. So now all of you watching this 
video right now, you will be familiar with and you will be educated as to what you should be looking at as far as what an inspection report is supposed to detail and include. So me as a contractor and as most of you know, I'm a home inspector as well. I have a certificate on my wall. It says 120 hour principles and practices of home inspection. Now as a contractor building homes, I pretty much know every aspect of the construction of a home. But I went ahead and put in 120 hours for my home inspection license and I did it through a company called IFREC in Orlando. So for two weeks straight, I went back and forth to Orlando all day, every day, all, all day long, went out in the field, did all these that an inspection report is supposed to include. All right, so I know what I'm looking at. I know what I'm doing. And every time I find that I have to follow behind these home inspectors and kind of check out uh, even the inspection report as to what it includes and maybe what it doesn't include. So I would say a couple of months ago, I followed behind a home inspector and he didn't report about moisture that was inside double pane windows. And this kind of floored me when this inspector did not note that in the inspection report. So it's about $200, $250 a window when you have to pull those that double pane out and, and have it replaced. So that could add up into a lot of money. Most recently, I had a home inspector go through and note things that shouldn't even have been on the inspection report. So I have some that are not putting things that are supposed to be in an inspection report. I have others that are putting things in, a inspection, in an inspection report that absolutely don't need to be in, in an inspection report. So I called out this one company and I'm going to kind of read to you my email to this home inspector and so what I put in there was hello Steve I received an inspection report from your company today that called out hairline cracks in the stucco of a home now first of all let me just say all concrete cracks any contractor will tell you all concrete cracks and in that paragraph 12 under cosmetic items it says cracks in walls specifically are cosmetic items, but they went ahead and called out these settlement. Or they're not. Well, in my opinion, they weren't settlement cracks. They were expansion cracks. So concrete expands and contracts. And so that's why you'll almost always see cracks in a slab, in a driveway in a garage. So what I tell everybody, there's a difference between settlement cracks and um, what are what I consider structural cracks. Structural cracks to me, now when you're talking about a flat surface, are cracks that are uneven. Okay, that to me, there's a problem with the foundation of the home and you have an uneven Crack, but like I said, any contractor, any concrete guy will tell you all concrete cracks. Now, a lot of concrete companies will go ahead and pour their concrete and they'll cut, they'll cut saw cut joints in a con in the concrete to try to control that crack, but even a lot of times that doesn't do it. Let's talk about stucco. Stucco is put over well mostly block homes now there is um, stucco that is put over a wire lath so it sticks over wood framed homes but a lot of these wood framed homes kind of breathe and they stretch and they, they expand and so you'll get a lot of times cracks in stucco and but what happens with wood frame homes you have a moisture barrier 
over the wood. Then you have this wire left that typically has tar paper backing it up. And so when you have these cracks, it doesn't necessarily get through into the home to cause mold and moisture damage. So there's something called a thermal imaging tool or gun that we're going to show you right here. This is what thermal imaging looks like. So a good inspector will have a thermal imaging gun which will detect if there's moisture behind a wall. That's what the thermal imaging is all about. In particular, there's a company called FLIR, F-L-I-R, that, um, that actually manufactures these things. I was trained in my 120-hour principles and practices for my home inspection to use one of these guns. So I know the effectiveness of them. So in my opinion, if a home inspector is going to call out a crack in a wall, what he needs to do is he needs to go with his thermal imaging gun and go through that part of the wall and make sure there's, see if there's any um, water intrusion or not. Now, like we just talked about before, all concrete at some point will crack because of the expansion in the hot and cold and stucco is merely cosmetic when it goes over a block wall or even a wood frame wall with wire lath. It's cosmetic in the fact that, well, obviously you're not going to leave a block wall bare and or just paint it over, but that's kind of what stucco is all about. Now, there is a type of cracking called stair stepping in a block wall that would concern me because what that is letting you know is that the joints between the concrete block have actually settled and caused space to be created in where it's stair stepping. But if you see just a minor hairline crack in stucco, to me, you don't really have to worry about that as much simply because it's mostly up against a block wall and moisture can't get through block as long as there's not a stair stepping effect going on where that could be possible moisture penetration into that wall because of that settlement and that stair stepping. So this one company, home inspection company, called out these hairline cracks that were not stair stepping and they didn't even go with their thermal imaging gun and check to see if there was any kind of moisture behind the wall. So I called them on that. I said, look, first of all, paragraph 12 of the contract says minor cracks in walls are considered cosmetic. If it's considered cosmetic, they shouldn't be calling that out in an inspection report. An inspection report is meant to see what is not in working condition, right? as we explained in paragraph 12. So, called him out on that, and uh, he didn't seem to really uh, like what I said. And I also called him out on a few things else. His home inspector says, I suggest, now this is a 2019 home, all right? It's four years old. And he goes, I suggest you have the dryer vent cleaned out. Not knowing whether it was cleaned out last week, yesterday, two weeks ago, a month ago, or whatever, he just blatantly put in his report, I suggest you do that. So what, are, what is a buyer going to do when he sees that inspection report? He's going to request that seller to clean out that dryer vent when it might not even need to be cleaned out. So that doesn't need to be called out in an inspection report. He had no business saying, I suggest that you clean out the dryer vent. So that kind of really disturbed me by him doing that. Next, he calls out um, the structural integrity 
of where the roof, the shingles on the roof, meet a stucco portion because of the way the roof is designed. So he calls that out. He goes, there is potential problems with the design of this home because of the fact that water could get inside where water would travel down the roof shingles up against the stucco. So when a home is constructed like this with this type of roof, a galvanized metal flashing is run before the shingles were even put on, before the stucco was even put on. There's a galvanized metal flashing that goes along that channel where the, where the, um, the plywood or OSB board meets the other OSB board that comes down here and then the shingles run up on top of that galvanized metal flashing and then you stucco over that galvanized metal flashing to prevent any water intrusion for coming into that channel. So by calling out something like that that says that they feel like this is a flaw and I'll tell you exactly what they said. Due to roof design at front, multiple planes of roof carry water to stucco flashing at elevated roof above entrance. There is a history of water damage to walls and ceilings of front bedroom and or garages with this particular design. Then they go to say no moisture stains detected and no evidence of water intrusion in this attic. Front of roof flashing is not covered under our guarantee. Look, an inspector's job is not to call out to the buyer when there's not a problem because they already said there's no moisture detected when they went up in the roof to look at this area. It's not his job to call out whether or not this um, particular design um, has a history of water damage, right? Now, have I seen water damage before in a situation like this? Yes, I have. I will not sit here and tell you that a roofer may not have done the right job or maybe there might have been some kind of a flaw or whatever, you know, but to sit there and call out what I can also say is why not call out due to the fact that Florida has had sinkholes. You know, I just want to let you know that this home could have a sinkhole under it at some point in time. That's about the same thought pattern as what they're trying to say. They're trying to say there's a history. There's a history of a lot of things. There's a history, like I said, of sinkholes. Are you going to call out sinkholes? No, you have no business calling out what could happen when there's absolutely no detection of something like that right now. Now, the home is four years old. It's had time, if there was going to be a problem, to show that there was a problem. There's no problem. There's no reason to sit there and call that out in a home inspection. They had no business doing that. So there's just a number of things that, you know, that this one home inspector, who I will never, ever use again, because when I called him about it, when I called him on it, well, so what was his response? Let me tell you what his response is. And this is why I feel like you need me to kind of go behind these home inspectors. He says, I am going to cancel the other inspection you have with us as I see you are still a pain in the ass, quote unquote. In my 25 years as a home inspector, I have seen cracks in stucco cause moisture intrusion. Like I just said, there are circumstances where there has been moisture intrusion. However, when he says that, 
then he needs to call that out and says, I see moisture inside the wall with that thermal imaging gun, right? But he didn't do that. We have seen this roof plane issues cause moisture intrusion, which you would know if you are, were a home inspector long enough to see these things, which you, which you weren't. I'm a contractor. I've been, I was a contractor for many years. So this guy doesn't, even, even though, now you say you're a contractor. If you were such a good contractor and home inspector, why are you a realtor? A home inspector is hired to protect your buyer and not to make some smart ass realtor happy who thinks he knows everything and only worries about his commission and not his buyer. Some things never change. Please don't ever call us again. I will never call him again. So, he doesn't have to worry about that because I'm not going to go ahead and put him out there or the name of his company out there. But if you would like to know who it is, I'd be more than happy to share it with you. But this is why I've made this video because not only this guy, he's the worst of the worst, in my opinion, but trying to call me out on stuff that I tried to let him know what my feelings were and to call me a pain in the ass and I'm sorry, or a smart ass realtor, I'm sorry to be that blunt, but that's the way he sent me an email. So that guy n needs never to really be a home inspector or do home inspections and he's certainly not going to do home inspections for me. Like I said, I've been through a bunch of different home inspectors and unfortunately it's hard to find a perfect home inspector. I even joked with Blakely to say I think I'm going to go ahead and activate my license again and I'm going to go out and start doing home inspections. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use my experience to follow behind these home inspectors, make sure that nothing is missed and make sure that nothing is put on there that shouldn't be on there. So you rest assured that you are buying a very good, competent, well-structured home. Okay, so that's why I'm making this video today because I wanted you all to know what's in paragraph 12. And every home inspector should go through paragraph 12. Know what's in paragraph 12. Don't offer some stupid opinion, opinions <clears throat> that have no business on a home inspection report. Okay? So, I want to thank you all for watching this video. And hopefully, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. If you want to make comments, please go ahead and make those comments. But rest assured, I want you to know that I am, I am there for you. I am an expert in construction and home construction as well as home inspections. I know what should be in a home in inspection report. I know what shouldn't be in a home in inspection report. If they want to make certain comments, make sure they back up what their comments are with evidence. This guy needs to go ahead and invest in a thermal imaging camera that can see through walls and back up what he's trying to say. But if not, he doesn't need to have that on his home inspection report. And so that's what I'm kind of bringing to you all, what needs to be in a home inspection report and what doesn't need to be in a home inspection report. And what everybody should know about paragraph 12B2 and then also there are other areas of paragraph 12 because it also has general property repairs in there. You all should be educated as to what that is. If you need me to send you this paragraph, I'd be more than happy to do that so you're educated before you even come here. But we're going to go over, when I, when I write a contract for somebody, we go over the whole contract paragraph by paragraph. So I make sure that everybody understands exactly what's in the contract that you're getting ready to sign. 
and what we're ready to uh, experience and what you should expect, especially in your home inspection reports. So thank you so much for watching this video. I look forward to hearing from you. Please give us a call. If we can help you, we're here for you. Thanks again for watching.